Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I have with me Danny Gordon. He's the principal of the the Haran School, which is one of the Saudi Aramco expat schools in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Danny, thanks for joining me today. It's nice to have you with me. Um, let's just dive right in. Um, why don't you talk first about what are some of those decisions that you all have made as a leadership team that seem to have worked really well for you during this pandemic response? Uh, thanks, Scott. It's uh, great to be here. So uh, Dahran School has 1,100 students, uh, all expatriates, uh, and it's uh, one of six schools of Saudi Aramco expatriate schools, which are operated by a Saudi Aramco energy company. And um, we got a head start. And when our schools closed on March, uh, I think, 8th or 9th, uh, we were ready for it. And uh, we got a head start. We started at the end of January with preliminary planning because um, when, when Wuhan sealed off its city, uh, and I watched that on the news, it occurred to me, and then I had a confluence of conversations with our team, uh, with my team, that uh, this was something that was pretty significant. And various members of the team had uh, various experiences in international schools with closures for various reasons. So we thought we should probably get, get on this. And then uh, for confluence of, like I said, factors, um, we, we started in earnest about uh, mid to late February planning for it. And uh, we, we had an advantage and that was we had lots of colleagues in the Far East and um, we had time. So one of the things uh, we talked about first was assembling the right uh, team to build the the right vessel, so to speak, to, 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 to navigate these uncharted waters. And uh, for us, what that looked like were the people who had their hands on the levers or built the structures and the systems within our school who, who could carry that teaching and learning forward. Um, or the teachers would be carrying the teaching and learning forward. So the original team started with the administrators, the instructional coaches, um, the uh, people in our tech office, mm -hmm. uh, counselor, and then I also uh, invited the tech director for the district to our meetings just to see if he was curious or not. And so when we all assembled, uh, we started with two fundamental questions. Uh, fundamentally, we, we broke into two groups and one group worked on each question. The first question was, what does the ideal online learning situation look like for a student, for a child? Mm -hmm. And the other question was, what does the ideal online learning situation look like for a teacher? Mm -hmm. And so we divided into two groups, went to separate rooms, spent 15, 20 minutes, and we just kind of had literally a blank piece of chart paper. We just kind of hashed it out. Then the two groups came back together and we compared the two perspectives uh, and tried to kind of see where we were. Well, after we'd had that initial conversation, we didn't make any decisions. We just kind of bounced those ideas around, around and let them marinate. And then, then we got on the phone, or in this case, Zoom, uh, with five of our colleagues, uh, two of them in China, one in Korea and one in Bangkok. And they were at various stages of responding to the pandemic. And so with each one of those school leaders, uh, oh, there was a, another one in Bahrain as well, uh, who was just across the causeway, but nonetheless, they were preparing. Right. So they were at various stages and we just listened. And, and we spent an hour and change with each one of those uh, school leaders and we listened and we asked questions and we listened and we asked questions and we just started to, 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 to um, talk about the things we were hearing. In addition to that, internationally, there were a lot of schools that were sharing in unprecedented sorts of ways and people were posting their response plans to school stoppages. And so the team looked over 15 or 16 different school plans. Yeah. And then we said, then we asked, after we had kind of learned from uh, the people who had been through it, we looked at ourselves, we looked inwardly, and we said, okay, what's going to work the best for us? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is it we can take away from what we've learned from all these people in it in various stages? And given what we know about our children, our teachers, our community, what, you know, our infrastructure, what's going to work the best for us? 
And somehow uh, four different key ideas kind of rose to the top or that we needed to address. Uh, and they came, they, they fundamentally became the foundation of everything we've talked about. Uh, in everything we learned, uh, we learned that uh, connectedness and uh, um, was gonna be key because isolation was huge. So we learned that connection, keeping kids together, somehow connecting kids to kids, kids to teachers, teachers to teachers, uh, to school, to the families. We knew connectedness was gonna be huge. Uh, the other challenge we heard was just the, the, the nuts and bolts of the teaching. How do you teach online? How do you teach distance learning? And the third one uh, that came up time and time again had to do with uh, the value of routine or structure and to the extent that you can keep that in, in place. And then this other piece that came up was like a balance. People were overwhelmed. Kids were overwhelmed. Parents were overwhelmed. Teachers were overwhelmed. So these were the themes that we kept hearing from our colleagues that they were facing. Um, you know, how do we keep the kids connected? How do we keep uh, the learning engaging and moving forward in such a way that there's routine and structure and that people aren't overwhelmed by it, but they are in fact, you know, energized by it. And so those kind of became our four fundamental cornerstones of moving forward. So based on those um, and our previous kind of uh, empathy work, if you want to call it that, or kind of what, what would be ideal for kids and teachers, is we really, we really focused, we really got clear and we, we thought to ourselves, you know, this is brand new, never did, been done before here. So we're gonna, we're gonna make it um, based on everything we've learned, based on all our experiences, we're gonna make it the best for our children in our community and our families. And so uh, key decisions were, we got really, really uh, clearly focused and we said, okay, we know these things, these four areas of focus, learning, connectedness, structure, and uh, balance were key. So then, okay, how do we help everyone with that? Well, number one is we got really focused and clear about digital tools and platforms. Yep. We said, okay, these, we, our learning management system, our Google suites uh, are, are in place, and those are gonna be the foundations. Our SAES, you know, learning, domain or email business email was going to be foundational and we just um we narrowed those and we just decided it would be the best for everyone if this 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 clear and then we uh we were even more clear about uh any digital tools that our kids have not been exposed to yet we are not going to introduce them now because there's a whole balance piece that we did not want to throw off. Uh, so, you know, then we talked about, okay, what's, let's talk about online teaching and learning. What's that look like? And so we really narrowed down basically a template for, uh, for a, a, a lesson. And at some point we had made this decision, you know, we don't want to call it virtual learning because that sounds like, well, maybe you're not really learning. We didn't want to call it online learning because we didn't want parents to think the kids were just going to sit online staring at the screen all day. So that's how we decided on this idea that it's going to be distance learning. That's how we're going to refer to it from day one. So our instructional coaches worked really, really hard to just identify here are the elements of an effective, engaging distance learning lesson. And we just built that template and then we went to our teachers and we said, ordinarily, uh, and they sought feedback from teachers along the way, not as much as we might ordinarily have, but we just said, this is it. Uh, this, is how, this is how we're going to deliver a distance learning lesson. And it's going to begin with a Google Meet. So we're all connected personally. Then you're going to have a launch with PowerSchool Learning. Then there's going to be the lesson for engagement. And then uh, you're going to, there's going to be some evidence of learning at the end of the lesson. So we built the lessons, uh, the lesson plan, the lesson template. We identified the digital tools and said, this is what our distance learning platform is going to be. These are the tools we're going to use. And then we built our school day and we just stripped it down to the core. And we said, what's essential here? Keeping in mind, we want to be learning. 
we want to be connected, we want to be uh, structured and balanced. So we looked at all kinds of different schedules and decided on a fundamental schedule that would include our core classes uh, that would meet uh, every other day. And then um, we would continue with our encore classes, which for us means fine arts and world language. And then we'd have our continue with our health and PE through what we call the wellness block. So we stripped our day down to basically four blocks of time, two for the core periods, one for the encore, and one for the wellness. And each of them was truncated. We didn't have a full day of school because we knew the overwhelming factor was a real concern. So we structured our day so it was condensed, it was clear, it was, um, we, we, knew that, we knew that we had this opportunity and we knew that we had done the research, we had learned from our colleagues, and this was going to be best for our students going forward. A real focus on the core classes and then the encore classes because we value the arts, we didn't want to lose that. World language is something we value, and we knew wellness had to be in there as well. The other idea we learned and key decision we made had to do with uh, this, this thing called distance learning fatigue. Every single person we talked to said that it is real. People are going to be exhausted. Your teachers are gonna be overwhelmed. Your students are gonna be overwhelmed. So we thought, how can we stave off distance learning fatigue? Well, one of the ways we did it was by stripping our schedule down to the cores, an encore block, and a wellness block, or world language block also. Um, we shortened our day. Uh, we, can, we made our lesson plan uniform, so we said there's no longer a sixth, there's a sixth grade teachers collaborating on three different lessons per se, but we said there's going to be a sixth grade language arts lesson. There's going to be a seventh grade what math lesson, you know, yep. and our teachers just came together to create those single lessons because we wanted to be able to support our kids without overwhelming them. And then we said, we're not going to do homework. Everything's going to be done within the block. Okay. Everything's going to be done within the block of time because we don't want to overwhelm our kids. And we, we want to make sure that the, the learning is enriching. It's, uh, it's engaging and it's not too much because we want to stave off fatigue. Right. The other idea we came up with was our, uh, we, our we, in Saudi Arabia, our work week starts on Sunday and ends on Thursday. So we uh, chose Tuesday right in the middle of the week, uh, and we developed what we call I Choose Tuesday, which was going to be, was a day for students to pursue their independent interests, uh, things they're curious about, to be uh, creative, to be uh, innovative. Um, so we knew that we wanted to break up the routine and that we knew that we needed to give some time for our teachers. If our teachers were going to be able to sustain the high quality planning, uh, we wanted to get time in the week for them. And we also knew we wanted to deliver a five day engaging program. So, uh, we knew we had a purpose. We want to break up the routine for kids. Uh, we want to stave off the distance learning fatigue. We need planning time for teachers. So we created Tuesday and we started literally my, I could go back to my slides. We started with a blank slide, which just had the purpose. We didn't have a content. We didn't have a structure, um, for it. Um, and so we went to our staff and said, how can we develop this day and build on these dispositions of creativity and agency and voice and choice and right. give it back to the kids in such a way that's really meaningful and enriching for them. So a group of teachers developed this idea of Tuesday challenges mm -hmm. uh, that each had a format uh, where there's everything from um, baking to fine arts to science, pro STEM projects, Lego, ro robotic type projects, experiments, uh, you know, short stories, limericks, um, just an entire array of uh, activities that we put on our learning management system on Tuesdays. They can choose from those. And then uh, 
at the end of the day, they submit their work in a variety of different formats. And so far we've had our kids, uh, you know, it's about 83 to 85% of the kids are, are engaged in that, that are submitting things every Tuesday. And we make a point to, uh, to celebrate that. Uh, the other key piece that we do is we communicate with the parents. Every single day, uh, a letter from me, it's actually a spark note with, uh, with a short opening from me. Uh, and then as pictures of student work they submit during the day, we have our school spirit theme weeks. So every single day, something goes home to all the parents, all the students, all the teachers that is a message from me, here's how we're doing, here's where we are, here's where we're going. And then it celebrates student work, it celebrates the teacher's work. Uh, there's video clips and it just connects everyone back to school and, and parents and kids, everyone can see that there's, you know, real, you know, we're really doing meaningful work. Um, the kids are turning out amazing stuff and, uh, you know, we're staying connected in that way. So, so those are the pivotal kind of organizational kind of structural decisions we made that then we could insert the pieces into. Our teachers adopted it with incredible enthusiasm uh, and our students uh, were felt uh, very, very comfortable. The transition from uh, our kids leaving school to engaged in online, our kids missed one day because we were that ready. Uh, they missed one day, and then the first day before classes, we had activities to get them set up, and then we took off from there. Danny, that's awesome. Uh, the things that you all have done, the proactiveness of your approach, the flexibility and, and balance, uh, the student choice and agency, all really good stuff. I appreciate you sharing with me. Um, we're kind of nearing the end of our time here. Uh, as you think about challenges looking forward, uh, what's in your head right now as a school leader? Uh, challenges looking forward. Well, um, it's so many terrific skills and knowledge is being, uh, you know, earned and gained right now um, regarding how we learn and how we teach right. and how do we build upon that? How do we continue to use that and not just have it be something we do during distance learning. So to sustain and maintain and build upon all the skills that the teachers are learning as well as the students are learning. The model truly has taken the teacher from the sage on the stage. Not that we have a lot of those in a middle school um, that, that I'm in. I'm very, very, it's, it's, it's uh, tremendous in that respect, but truly our teachers are guides on the side because the, the lesson is built on the power school learning and then our teachers are there to assist and support. Yeah. So that's one of them. How do we continue with that? The other one is our students are certainly learning a lot of independent skills and making a lot of choices on their own right now. And they're pursuing a lot of their own interests um, because they have time to do it because they're not, you know, uh, on a school, the regular school time schedule. So when they come back to school, it will be very, very, uh, fun to capitalize on this new independence and this new confidence and this new self-assuredness of, oh yeah, I can do that. I've got it. So just, uh, you know, building upon that as well. Um, those are two areas where my mind goes. Yep. Our I Choose Tuesdays right now, uh, right now the teachers are building these challenges and the students are taking it. Um, you know, we'd like to get to this place where, you know, the students are, are you know, the the origin of their own learning and creation and take it from there and take the baton so to speak so as we look forward those are three areas where teaching and learning is concerned um, that i think about danny that was fantastic thank you so much for spending some time with me today and uh good luck with the rest of the school year <laughs> all right scott thanks for having me absolutely